Hello, in this introductory presentation on market efficiency, I'm going to talk about different aspects of stock price behavior. Uh, but before we get into that, here's a little bit of the uh, of what market efficiency is all about. All right, it is a concept describing the way in which security prices reflect all available and relevant information in the pricing of those assets. And therefore, what this is telling us is that if financial markets are efficient, then all information is already going to be built into the pricing of those assets. And if all information is built into the pricing of those assets, then no investor would be able to consistently outperform the market uh, by buying and selling in ways that can be uh, sustainably profitable. But, uh, but that's because there would be no undervalued or overvalued uh, securities, as it were. All right, so here are some of the terms and concepts that you're going to be happening across um, uh, throughout this series. All right, technical analysis, which is a concept describing the fact that uh, the investor is utilizing historical data to make a judgment as to whether to buy and sell. Um, fundamental analysis, which is uh, a path that examines the corporate and industry and perhaps even uh, broad economic fundamentals to see what kind of information can be expunged from those in making a buy and sell decision. And then uh, the concept of market overreaction, <coughs> excuse me, and market underreaction is one that speaks to the fact that sometimes when uh, security prices uh, uh, go up or go down, they overshoot. You know, and so you would expect them to return um, to where they should be. So it's a type of contrarian view, all right? If you're overreacting, then you're going to have to come back down. Um, if you're, uh, whether it's going up or going down, all right? And then underreaction says, hey, it went down, you can expect it to go down some more. Or it went up, you can expect it to go up some more because it underreacted in the first instance. <clears throat> And then the key thing here is the efficient market hypothesis, which we're going to be talking about shortly. And then information asymmetry is one that um, considers the fact that in the financial market, some investors are going to possess a lot better information than others and therefore would be in a position to uh, sort of um, utilize that, that information to do a lot better than the rest of everybody. Behavior of finance is interesting. Um, it's actually an offshoot of behavioral economics and looks at how human behavior, which is not often, uh, which is not sometimes rational, can cause one to make non-rational financial decisions. So that um, while it may not stand to reason that you should buy or sell a financial asset at a particular price and at a particular time, but it might actually bring you satisfaction to do so in some form or fashion. And then event studies provide us with uh, mathematical methodologies with which to examine the uh, efficacy, as it were, of the efficient market hypothesis. So these are uh, these are, some of these are explained in turn, beginning with technical analysis, which I already um, explained is uh, one that relies on forecasting the future direction of uh, stock prices, any asset prices actually, by looking at historical information. Then fundamental analysis looks at um, the corporate fundamentals um, so as to make a judgment as to what should be the intrinsic value of the security that you are analyzing. And then um, overreaction and underreaction as I spoke about earlier. Um, in the first instance, overreaction argues that the stock price uh, pr stock prices react disproportionately to new information. Um, so that extreme one day movements in stock prices are going to be followed by reversals. And the same thing is also going to happen um, if the stock price uh, goes down um, as it would going up. Underreaction, as I explained, argues that significant one day movements in security prices are going to be followed by additional movements in the same direction because, again, they underreacted in the first instance. And now, the big huncher here is the uh, <laughs> the head huncher, I guess I should say, is the if is market efficiency, um, which argues that actually that security prices fully reflect all available and relevant information. So 
all bits of information that are relevant in the pricing of the underlying assets are going to be fully reflected in its price so that no investor can consistently earn abnormal returns. Abnormal returns are the same thing as excess returns. All right, so the only thing you can earn is basically normal returns. And even if you earn an abnormal return on, on a day or two, you cannot expect to make that kind of killing on a consistent basis is the argument of market efficiency. So you can pause this video and look at my, sum my summary of uh, the concept. But that takes us into the efficient market hypothesis, which is summarized um, with this uh, illustration right here. There are three levels, weak form, semi-strong form, and strong form. Weak form market efficiency says that uh, don't worry about using looking at historical data because all of those are already reflected in the price of the stock or the security that you're intending to buy. Semi-strong form is saying, hey, in addition to historical data that any new and emerging public information is already, its value is already reflected in the price of the stock. And then the real tough one here is strong form market efficiency. All right, so this is arguing that in addition to public information, that actually private information is also reflected in the uh, valuation of the underlying security. And so a great deal of financial studies are, um, are designed to examine the um, validity of these uh, uh, hypotheses, weak form, semi-strong form, and strong form. Many studies um, conclude that um, for the most part, markets are weak form efficient in that historical data are already reflected in the price of the stock, of the assets. And um, some have uh, asserted that there is uh, some indication that markets might be semi-strong form efficient. But like I said, not all studies. Um, this is a tough one to prove right here because as you know every now and again we hear of uh, insider information which of course is pri private and how some um, the uh, lucky ones out there who uh, do things a little bit illegally are able to utilize such private information to uh, um, to make um, a lot of money in the market so these are explained in turns in the next set of slides as you can see here for weak form right um, for semi-strong form and strong form